All right, is time travel logically possible on A theories of time? So A theories of time, it's a way of splitting up theories of time into two classes, A theories of B theories. In A theories of time, the present moment is special in that it is more real. It's metaphysically privileged. It has a special ontological status. And there are different types of A theories of time. Um, so is time travel logically possible on these A theories? Well, on the presentist theory, only the present exists. So on the present presentist theory of time, there's nowhere to go. You can't go to the past because it doesn't exist. And you can't go to the future because it doesn't exist. So um, if you are a presentist, it seems that you cannot travel in time. Um, the growing, growing block theory says that the, the present is privileged, it's more real, but the past, there's a four-dimensional space-time past that is there, that still exists. Um, it exists, the past exists, so you could go there. The um, growing block theory, however, does not allow for future time travel because the future does not yet exist. So they call it a growing block because it starts, it's a four-dimensional, the universe is a four-dimensional space-time block. And as time moves, it just grows, 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 grows bigger as we add future moments onto that block. So the past doesn't go away like in presentism, like in presentism. Um, so let's see. Is time travel logically possible on B theories of time? So this is a pure B theory. Um, you could think of it as a four-dimensional space-time block, or I believe these are supposed to be, the reason why it's a shape is there are two light cones um, with the present moment represented here. But for the B theories of time, there's nothing metaphysically special about the present moment. The present is not more real, not more privileged than any other moment in time. So let me explain that a little more, um, what that means. Uh, so this is from the Cider article, but it would help to review it here. So um, time for the B theorist, the block, the four-dimensional space-time block um, theorist, um, here is just what we call an indexical. That just means it, it specifies one location. So when I say I'm here in Las Vegas, and you say, I'm here in Colorado, that doesn't mean that you're any less real than I am. Okay, so I'm um, here, this Oregon, Oregon is here, here it's rainy, Florida's here, here it's sunny. Um, these do not contradict each other because a here just picks out the spot where you happen to be. So words like here and there are just relative to your location and um, this is applied to the B theory and that words like here and there are just specify where one is in the space time block. So um, take it on a time dimension, um, someone who is distant from me in time, someone that lived 200 years ago, could just as truthfully say, I'm here, I'm alive and I'm here here is the present and they say here is the present so things like the present and now and um are just indexicals the word now just picks out where i happen to be in time just like the word here picks out where i'm um, my location in space your my here isn't more special than your here and the person 200 years ago their now isn't more special than mine now okay so is time travel logically possible on B theories of time? So that means is that does um, time travel involve any logical contradictions that would make the two not fit together? And it seems like no, um, the B theory seems the most permissive about time travel because if time and space are analogous, there's no conceptual reason why we can't treat time just like space. So there's no um, conceptual impossibility on the B theory of time. Okay, so just to review, uh, an A theory like presentism, you can't go somewhere where there isn't a past. You can't go somewhere, so nothing exists here, so you can't go there. On the A theory of time that privileges now where there's a past, you might be able to travel 
to the past but not the future. And here's like a spotlight view where now is highlighting um, a more real point of point in time. Um, we'd have to get clear on what more real means to say whether or not time travel is metaphysically possible on that model of time. Okay, so um, here's some objections to the possibility of time travel. So these are objections that say um, time travel is not logically possible. There's some sort of um, conceptual confusion about the idea of time travel. Whoop. One is what we call the logical, well, what Lewis calls the logical problem, and we'll be looking at that right now. And then in the next two lectures, we'll talk about um, the problem of causal loops, which involves backwards causation, and oh, and also something called gin. And gin, I think it's J I N N, yeah. Okay, and the grandfather paradox. So uh, those are lectures to come because I want to split this up a bit. Here we go. Okay, those are some objections. Okay, so what's the logical problem? The logical problem of time travel, Lewis states like this. Soon she will be in the past. Um, some people have pointed out that that very sentence involves a contradiction, just like saying two plus two equals five. Soon implies future. Soon she will be in the past. Um, some have said that this involves, a, this very idea involves a logical contradiction. Um, similarly, I pulled this out of Looper. I think a student um, gave me this line uh, and pointed out how it's similar to this one. But a line in Looper says, yesterday is 30 years from now. You have to sit down and think, what does that even mean? Yesterday is 30 years from now. It seems like this, this is a self-contradictory statement, like saying bachelors are unmarried males. Bachelors are not unmarried males. That's a contradictory statement. Just like yesterday is 30 years from now. What? That doesn't even make sense. So the logical problem of time travel spelled out a little more in syllogistic form. So. Time travel, traveling to, which is time travel, traveling to a point 100 years into the past in a period of five minutes involves a logical contradiction. Or you could even switch this. It might even be worse to say um, traveling to a point 100 years into the future in a period of five minutes um, involves a logical contradiction. Okay. Uh, e.g. the statement, soon she will be in the past. Okay, so time traveling um, to a point 100 years into the past in a period of five minutes involves a logical contradiction. So soon refers to the five minutes. She will be in the past, 100 years in the past. That seems to involve a contradiction. Two, whatever involves a logical contradiction is logically impossible. Therefore, time travel is logically impossible. So this is the argument that um, time travel, it's called the logical problem, the time travel involves an, um, an incoherency. Okay, so a solution, so Lewis in the article proposes a solution to uh, the time travel, the logical problem of time travel is that he splits, um, he splits time into two types, so personal time, one's own personal time, and external time. So personal time would be time from the perspective of the time traveler, and external time is time um, th that's going on for the rest of the world outside of the time travels, outside of the time traveler's perspective. Okay, so you can make sense out of the statement, soon in the future, he will have traveled into the past. You can make sense of this by saying soon in the time traveler's personal time, he will have traveled in the past in external time. So if you split it up like this and you index whose future and who's soon and whose past it is, there's not a direct contradiction.